Hello, this is Clint with another episode of Killer Otaku Robots. This is Core Gaming. On this episode, we're going to be looking at uh, a couple of different DOS games here and getting the MIDI output on there to be higher quality than ever before. To do this, we're using a program called MIDI Player. This is uh, actually a pretty awesome program made by uh, Falco Soft. It acts as a, as a MIDI synthesizer, and we're going to be using this for the majority of this tutorial. So the I basic idea of this is to get DOSBox, instead of processing the music through itself, get it to forward it over through another program called Loop MIDI over to MIDI Player. From there, uh, you'll get a much higher quality sound than you would normally be able to. So the main game I'm going to be optimizing here is Doom 1, like the original Doom. I have the Steam copy here just because this is something that pretty much everyone can get. It's pretty cheap online right now. Let's check what the current price is. So yeah, right now it's uh, $5.49 Canadian. Um, so I'm guessing that's something like 3 bucks or something US. Let's go through what it sounds like now. One thing to notice here is that when you launch Doom, it comes up with two different options. Um, to play it with with uh, WASD, like kind of modern uh, keyboard controls, and uh, to play it with the old-fashioned controls we have to use the arrow keys for everything. So if you take a listen to the sound right now, this is kind of what it's using with um, OPL3. This is It's basically emulating the chips that were very common in Sound Blaster cards back in the day. It's not a bad sound, but it's not exactly modern either. And there's a lot of little details and uh, other things that are in the uh, the MIDI notes and, and the, the synthesized music that they composed for these games that you just can't hear with the OPL3. There, there's so much detail in this. It's actually pretty amazing, and I didn't really figure that out until I started playing around with some of these uh, some of these synths. So I'm just gonna let some of this play. Thank <laughs> you. 
Everything's still working here. So anyways, this is a good example of what the sound sounds like on the OPL3. Just normal DOS box sort of thing. Um, the main song that everyone kind of thinks of when they play Doom is e E1M1, Episode 1, Mission 1, which I'm going to play right here. I'm not going to go for the secrets, I'm just uh, going to do a quick run through. So yeah, this is kind of how it works right now. Um, normal old music style. That's how it normally sounds. Let's make it sound a little bit better. First off, what you have to do is right-click on the game, go to Properties, then go to Local Files. Then here, go to Browse Local Files. This shows you the, the folder where the game itself is actually stored. In here, there is a bunch of uh, batch files. These are basically scripts that Steam uses to run the game. The test one you can ignore, but the two that... When, when you started, it gave you, gave you the option for use with uh, WASD controls or the classic controls from like 1995. These are the scripts that it runs when you choose those options. So if we just right click on it, uh, Windows 10 lets you just click edit. If none of these come up, come up as an option, just choose open with and uh, choose notepad. So anyways, uh, if, if you look at the script that's, that Steam wrote, it's sending a config file called ultimate M over to DOSBox. And it's doing it all in the base folder, which is a subfolder of what it's currently in. And let's take a look at this one and see what this one's doing. Uh, ultimate, just ultimate conf. Okay, so M must stand for mouse. So what you gotta do is go to the base folder, which it had in the script there, and now we gotta look at what the... So he, these are the two files. This is the one where WASD controls, and this is the uh, default controls. So we have to figure out um, what these are doing now. And these are also the files that we're gonna need to edit. So let's... Same thing with these. Um, Edit, if that doesn't show up, open, it'll be open with, uh, you know, tell it, you, usually it doesn't show notepad on here, it's only because I have it on here, Windows 10 is dumb, and notepad usually shows up as an option. So once you have notepad open, it'll show you, uh, you know, a bunch of the random settings here. The first thing we're going to look at is what is it doing when it starts. After auto EXEC, that, everything after this is what uh, DOSBox does as soon as it launches. If you're familiar with an old DOS machine, this should be pretty familiar to you. It's the exact same thing as an autoexe.bat. Um, so anyways, it looks like it's mounting the C drive to that base folder that we're in. Uh, then it changes to the C drive, then it launches Doom, and then it exits once Doom is done being played. So that's normal. Um, that's the one for default controls. And let's see what this one does. Scroll all the way to the bottom. Okay, so what this one is doing is it's sending a file called mouse.config over to Doom. Well, CFG, not config. So it looks like uh, these .cfg files are what we're, what we're going to need to edit for that. So in the ultimate M, it mentioned a CFG file. Uh, the CFG file here and there's another one here, default.cfg, chances are that's what Doom uses. So that's probably what this one is using when it's not specifying a config file. What we're going to need to do here is edit these CFG files. Now this bit, I had to look up to see which one it is. Um, we're going to have to change the music device from 3, which is Sound Blaster, over to 8 which is MPU-401. What MPU-401 is, instead of Doom sending the music data, the MIDI data, over to the Sound Blaster card, it sends it to 
a, a Roland like MPU 401 card. This is this was kind of just a standard that Roland started that all of the other well not all but most of the other sound cards basically emulated. So it'll let you send MIDI data from that card over to an external synthesizer like a like a big keyboard or whatever. What we're using it for in this case is to send it from instead of going to the emulated Sound Blaster card, it sends it straight to DOSBox and DOSBox will send it uh, wherever we tell it. By default, it uses the uh, built-in Windows synthesizer, which is terrible sounding. It, it sounds like garbage. The OPL3 stuff we were listening to earlier sounds better. So yeah, how you change that is change it from a 3 to an 8. That's all you gotta do for this bit. Um, normally, you'd be able to do it with the setup.exe that Doom comes with if you're doing this on an actual like DOS machine or not using a Steam copy, but setup.exe is strangely absent in here. It's nowhere to be seen. They, they tried to make this uh, these game files as slim as possible. I don't know why. Um, it's possible that they were coming up as a uh, as like a false positive for some antivirus programs. Because I know some 16-bit setup programs have done that to me in the past. Maybe that's why they removed it. But um, yeah, so so there is no program to let you change the sound card settings like there'd normally be. So that's why we have to do it here in the text file. Which is fine. Thank thankfully, uh, the guys at id back in the 90s decided to make this a user-readable file. So that's for the mouse one. Um, now there should be another one for default. So we need, we need to change this as well. So... Music device, instead of a 3, an 8. There you go, MPU 401. Now that that's done and saved, we're going to need to go back in here and uh, edit the DOS box settings again. Uh, this time, we're going to be going down to this one right here. Normally this is blank, but I've been in this file before. Um, MPU 401, we want this to be uh, an intelligent mode. We want it to use the default. This bit here, we'll, you'll have to type in what device it is. Usually it's one, like 99 times out of 100, it'll be one because you don't have any MIDI devices on your computer. So there's only gonna be, there's only gonna be two when we're done uh, setting this up. The loop MIDI one, which we, we're gonna install in the next step and the, uh, and the built-in one built into Windows, which I, like I said earlier, it, it's garbage, never use it. So the built-in one is zero, it's always zero, and uh, one is gonna be the loop MIDI thing that we're gonna install. So once that's done, click save. And yeah, so all you have to do for these uh, config files, for the CONF files, is change the MIDI, just change that from a blank to one, because normally it's, it's just like that. So you change that to one, and, chain, and uh, just make sure you see where the other config file for that is. Uh, this not only works with Doom, like the original Doom, it also works with uh, Doom 2 and uh, like Plutonia Doom or whatever, the, the mod packs and like the added stuff, the, the other versions of Doom, Final Doom, stuff like that. Now let's download Loop MIDI. So you just look it, on, look it up on Google. Um, it will also be in the description below for the uh, final version of this video. You guys are live streaming, you, you won't be able to see that link because I haven't done that yet. <laughs> but even then, on Google, it's the first link. Um, click on Download Loop MIDI, let that download. So, when you have the Loop MIDI in, uh, downloaded, just open it up, double click on the setup here, read to the terms. And there you go, it's done. Um, when you come into Loop MIDI for the first time, uh, this area will be blank. It's pretty easy. You can name this port uh, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. And then when you have that named, you just click plus. A little plus sign there. And that lets you put in there. You can also add multiples in there. Um, if you have multiple devices, there's probably some weird need for that, but I can't think of one. Um, maybe if you want to switch between this and cool MIDI, you can do that just by editing the config file and you can have both running at the same time. I don't know, but for the most part, you can just leave it with one but you can add more if you want. But anyways, that's done, and you never have to run this program again, so. And when that's downloaded, you're gonna need another program. 
This program is, yeah, the, the all-important one for this setup. Falcosoft MIDI player. I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. It's got a lot of useful programs, but uh, by far as most useful as this one, the uh, SoundFont MIDI player. Just download this one here, the uh, the one with the bass MIDI and the sound font kind of built in. It's all, all in one sort of package. It's pretty small. Um, not only does this run on Windows 10, it also runs on Windows 8, Windows 7, uh, even Windows XP and Windows 98, which is really useful for one of the features that it has. Once you have this zip downloaded, you just extract it to a folder, and it'll look something like this. So, when this program is extracted, you just uh, click on the MIDI player.exe there. You don't need to install this program, it's portable. You can extract it wherever you want, like to your, to your D drive or to the desktop, it doesn't really matter. It comes with a couple sound fonts kind of built into it. But we're going to need to change some settings on here in order to get it to connect to Loop MIDI. Hmm. It's disabled again, isn't it? Uh, on mine, the default settings seem to have been messed up for some reason. But uh, normally this is checked. If it does what it just did with me there, just make sure this is checked. It comes with the Reality uh, GMGS sound font, which is actually pretty good. It's pretty good for most things, and the thing I really like about it is that it's actually pretty small. It's only about 10 megabytes. Now, back in the 90s, a 10 megabyte sound font was considered ludicrously huge. But compared to the one I normally use, which is somewhere around one gigabyte, this is nothing. So that's for that. Uh, you could just leave that alone, the default. You could change around some other settings on here, like your chorus and your reverb. I like to turn down the chorus down a little bit and uh, have hall set to two. I just like that one a little more. These are all personal preference. You can change those whatever you want. Now, one of the nice features about MIDI player is that it acts as sort of a MIDI matrix. So it'll redirect MIDI signals wherever you want. Um, it'll also listen to MIDI signals and uh, it can also redirect them to the sound fonts, but it also has an option so it'll redirect it to VSTi files. Um, people in the music editing industry might actually find that familiar and that's the main killer feature of this. Because with VSTi, you can start using some really professional level audio equipment, well, software, and that's part of what I'm going to show in this video, but I'm not going to go into detail into it. I'm going to save that for its own separate video. So anyways, the important feature to do here, just click on active, follow the channel, and the loop MIDI port. That should probably, like I said, 99% of the time, that's going to be your only option in there. Um, so yeah, that's basically all you have to do. When you open the settings there, just on the gear, click on active, you're done. Well, yeah, and switch that to follow. You don't really need to do that, it's, yeah. Uh, I also like to use the 6x, 6x for volume and balance. Because some games use that. Some don't, and they'll make it do weird things. But Doom uses it, so yeah. Let me get rid of this thing. So anyways, now that that's set up, and now that we've already configured um, the game, instead of using the music that you're, it was showing before, it should sound a little different for you. Let me get that running in the corner here, and let me play this again. And just like that, we have MIDI player here uh, doing all the music effects instead of DOSBox. This not only works with, with Doom, but it should work with pretty much any game in DOSBox that supports MPU 401. So most DOS games have, uh, have this feature that is usually called General MIDI. Um, the part where you're going into the, the .cfg files, like default.cfg and mouse.cfg, that's just for Doom because with Steam, they removed this, this setup program. But for uh, other games like, say, Tyrion, Monkey's Island, or Duke Nukem, they all work with this. This sounds a little bit better. It's not too bad. Um, because you can chain VST plugins, and uh, you can also chain, chain sound font files, you can make this sound basically any way you want. You can make it sound like an old Nintendo. You can make it sound like a completely different sound card. You can make it sound like a, uh, a professional Roland synthesizer from the 80s or the 90s. There, there's an almost endless amount of options with this. Uh, let me show you one that I've done. So I'm just going to close this. Well, actually, first, let, let's show what uh, 
E1M1. So yeah, definite improvement from before. Uh, the reality sound font is actually pretty good for this. Okay, here's mine. Alright, let's see how this one sounds. Okay, this one I'm also going to have on a bit of a loop here.
Now to show what e E1M1 sounds like. This is kind of the uh, the showstopper for this particular setup. A massive improvement from the other setups. Hello, and thanks again for watching part one of the Doom MIDI project. The next episode will definitely be a bit more interesting. If you would like to see the behind the scenes footage for how this episode was made, uh, as well as uh, future episodes that we're going to be doing later, you can check those out on our Patreon or on our Discord. The links for those are in the description below. Please give this video a like if you liked it, and if you have any questions or you just want to say hi, please do so in the comment section below. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thanks again, and may the mecha be with you. Do a quick overview and show how to do it for Doom 2. Uh. Basically the same steps. Browse local files. Check what this is doing. Doom 2M. This one's probably Doom 2. Yes, it is. Mouse.config. Okay, so that's all the same as Doom 1 then. So I just need to go to MIDI. That set is 1. Good. MIDI, that's set as one. Good. 
Let's go to the config files. Yeah, that's three, that needs to be eight. Save. Exit. It's three, that needs to be eight. Save. Exit. Okay, there we go. Doom 2 is uh, now set up for as well. Yep, looks like it's working. Straight for the chainsaw. Mouse sensitivity is just stupid high right now. What the heck? That's gonna make it hard to play. I wonder if I could change that. Still too high. something out here. Yes, there is. Best weapon in the game. Well, actually, there's the dual barrel shotgun. That one's better. 